The idea here is that we have been discussing for the entire length of our course, básicamente antes de los breaks y después de los breaks y desde el principio, the consumer side of things, the side of the demand. And now, or starting with this class and moving forward, hasta un poquito después del second midterm, we will basically discuss the production side of things, the side of the supply. So we will focus on how things are decided within firms and what are the type of decisions that these firms, these companies and the people that manage them or work for them have to decide in terms of determining how much should they produce, at what price should they price basically the, the their product, the, their different distribution channels, things that normally are part of the marketing team, but at the same time that it has to take into account the people designing the product and obviously the people managing them. So we'll basically focus on this idea of technology and how it affects profits, cost functions, and in general, the idea of supply. Technology is the most important thing within firms because it determines the way they decide to produce. Based on the technology they have access to, they essentially determine what is the correct or at least the most efficient way for them to produce uh, the whatever thing they produce. So essentially, it's really important that we understand that through the technology process, we grab as a firm or we take certain inputs, certain products that we buy and use them in our production process. And through that process and with that technology, we turn those inputs into outputs, which are, we basically grab some products, we buy them, we use them as part of our production and to generate or to produce our own goods, the ones that we'll sell in the market, we will basically do some technological process And based on that, we will essentially produce a new product, which we'll refer to as outputs. So inputs are these things that we buy from other firms or that we hire people, puede ser labor, or puede ser other materials or whatever we need to produce. And through the technology process, we essentially transform that into a final product, which is called the output. Suppose that we're working with manufacturing, in this case, the clothing industry. So consider Nike, the brand, which produces a bunch of sports shirts, entre ellas las camisas de los Pumas, equipo al que yo le voy. So they produce basically a bunch of, of soccer team jerseys eh, from around the world. And the, the output in this case would be the jerseys de cada equipo, de, del cual produzcan. And the inputs could be a, a bunch of things, but we could think of the hours of work that those work workers that are, are, are hired and, and placed in those factories basically work as a labor input. Uh, the land on which the factories are located, if you didn't pay rent for the industrial ship, was the nave industrial in a park industrial. Uh, other types of materials like cotton, thread, no? raw materials, sewing machines, That's another type of input, eh, irons, other type of equipment they may need. Todos esos are part of like the capital side of things, no? the, all of those machines and equipment. And they're basically the capital input, pero es otro input en el cual they, or they use to produce the output, which is essentially the, the Nike jersey. So essentially what this process describes is this idea of a production set. So a production set is Basically, the set of all combinations of inputs and outputs that are technologically feasible. Just as we could think when we were focusing on the consumer side of things, of the different combinations of goods that that person wanted to buy. In this case, the production set is all the combinations of the things that the firm needs in order to produce their output. So for If I want to produce as a firm one million jerseys in un año, whatever time period I want to choose, what are all the different combinations of inputs that I could use to produce that quantity or that ese volumen para poder venderlo? Pues, what are the different ways I could produce them? In some countries, maybe I would produce with uh, a lot more workers because workers are, are, are cheap in that, in that particular country. Pensemos en un país asiático. Eh, and maybe less equipment or less, let's call it less machines. Maybe the, the amount of cloth 
para cada camiseta es la misma en cualquier país. But in other countries, más caros, maybe uh, if I wanted to produce something locally para un equipo más regional y menos así como internacional, maybe I would need to produce in that particular country with more uh, machines because workers are more expensive. But if we focus on other type of, of products, let's think of like cars. If you are a car manufacturing firm, you have a different brands of cars, no? And some of them may be produced in, 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 uh, in parts in Mexico or in the US, and others may be produced in, in, in Europe, no? In España, in Germany, depending on the brand. Uh, others may, may be produced in otros países, in Asia, los japoneses producen más de ese lado. But in general, the point is that even for a firm which is American, that like it's an American firm, car firm, Some of their cars or vans may be produced in Mexico, others may be produced in the U.S. And the way that production is constituted, in cada planta in particular, those inputs will vary. No es lo mismo la planta de Silao que la planta en Nashville. The type of costs que eso tiene cambia en función de cada país, de cada región, de las leyes, de different type of stuff. So their production set will be different. They have to produce... 1,000 cars, so una cosa del estilo, but the way they produce them changes, and those changes may be uh, basically uh, determined within the production set. So, for simplicity, el ejemplo más sencillo es, imagine that some product requires only one input. So, to produce this single output Y, we basically use this technological function or production function, Y equals F of X, And we basically transform this input and get an output. So we basically have something like this in the sense that all the, ye the, the yellow, uh, like, no es un triángulo, but like the yellow semicircle or quarter of a circle that, that is shown in the graph is essentially all the different combinations of inputs that I could use to produce this output. Aquí solo tenemos un input. Entonces, pues, eso restringe mucho las combinaciones, porque sería, sería así como puros trabajadores. The more input you have, la, las combinaciones se hacen más extensas y el número de combinaciones cambia, de manera que pues, pueden hacerlo eh, diferente. Questions hasta este momento, uh, what, what I mean about the production set. So, then, this idea of technological constraints or it's directly related to the idea that I was discussing with Patricio a couple of minutes ago in that technology is considered a transformation process for the terms of our class, para simplificar las cosas. So, let's call it nature, oh, la, la, la vida, el destino, places constraints on the combinations of inputs that produce a specific level of output. And these are called the technological constraints. Es un término mucho más general, porque está hablando de un montón de cosas que no necesariamente son tecnológicas, pero que tienen que ver con restricciones a la producción. And that was what we were discussing about, like how in certain places, laws may indicate that you need to pay higher wages, or that you need to do use, como en el Temec que Trump forzó que la producción de coches tenga que tener 60, ¿qué era? 68%, creo, este, de contenido, eh, o sea, de inputs, de partes y componentes que vengan de los países en el tratado, para evitar que, se, que, que empresas asiáticas puedan como que este, vender eso, y entonces estaba buscando proteger a sus autoparteros gringos, ¿no? And so that the type of, of constraints that affect your technological process will determine how much output you can produce. Es esencialmente el tipo de función de producción que tendrían. Es como, qué forma funcional, llamémoslo así, tomaría esa F, que esa F de X, pues no es lo mismo si es una F de X que es X1 más X2, así es como X cuadrada, o X1 cuadrada por 3X2 al cubo más no sé qué, like all those inputs. That form is basically a way to model these technological constraints. So an example that I'm placing in this slide is this idea that a worker in a shirt factory, un poco pensando en este ejemplo of the Nike shirts, could make, or basically can't make, sorry, can make two large shirts of just one piece of cotton. En este caso es literal un constraint with regards to the materials, que es, If you want to produce a soccer jersey tamaño grande, de hombre adulto, 
you need X metros cuadrados o X centímetros cuadrados de, de, de tela, eh, la tela que, con la que se vaya a hacer el material o la camiseta. And the point is that no matter how efficient or the greatest worker you may have, si no tiene suficiente material, no puede producir. So there are the type of things that, that constrain the way you produce. So in certain countries, in certain places, with different firms, the specific technology may be constrained by different restraints. Y esto es un poco la idea de, it doesn't matter if you have the best management del mundo, o if you have the best engineers que diseñaron un proceso bárbaro, unos este, people that are really good at marketing stuff, si no tienes los materiales, si no te dan los costos, you can't overcome that situation. And that's why it's really important to understand the different sides of production. Okay, so basically, as I was describing, the, the one input example was really, really, really simplified. En la vida, cualquier cosa que produzcan va a requerir más de un input, porque es obvio, ¿no? O sea, un solo input es el puro trabajo de la gente que vaya a emplear, o ustedes mismos. And all the different raw materials that you may need entrarían como different input. For this course, we will focus basically on the idea of using two inputs para que sea fácil de, de modelar, no sea muy complicado. And most of the times, to produce a Y unit of the final product or the output, we will be thinking of basically the inputs labor, trabajadores contratados, and capital. Machines, equipment, all the other like things that they need to produce, basically. And we will group Basically, all the different inputs into those two categories para hacerlo más sencillo. Labor and capital. So, this technological constraints, que es un poco lo que discutí ahorita con Nicole, is this idea that you can substitute certain stuff, certain inputs, cuando hay ciertas condiciones que te impiden producir de esa forma que venías produciendo, como el ejemplo del coronavirus, and there is a trade-off. Porque a lo mejor I can substitute my production, pero that trade-off implies changing to another input brand, que a lo mejor es más cara, o a lo mejor la calidad del material es más chafa. So that has effects on my production. Maybe I can still hit the target, but maybe the quality will be cheaper, o bueno, más, más chafa. Or maybe it will be more expensive to produce. O inclusive a lo mejor no voy a poder llegar a ese nivel de output. So there's always a trade-off. When I substitute inputs, algo va a cambiar del producto. All those different combinations are the way people produce. And it's important to have them in mind because to produce, you want to produce as efficiently as you, as you could. Este, but that uh, also takes into account your, your client's preferences and fin, a bunch of like different things that you need to take into account. And you want to produce as efficiently as possible, but maybe, pues, hacerlo lo más barato posible la producción ahora en, de, en épocas de coronavirus implica que tengo que sacrificar ciertos platillos o ciertos productos que son de los más caros and people don't have money right now so mejor maximizo mis ventas con lo, lo, la versión más barata so there are actually a bunch of restaurants like the fancy restaurants in Mexico City that are obviously doing takeout pero no están haciendo takeout de toda su carta y de sus menús de degustación así de dos mil pesos de como 11 course type meals sino están más bien vendiendo versiones bastante Fifis de como comida de fonda, pero con like with the, the, the quality of the restaurant tal de Polanco. So that's the type of thing in trade-off que pues es obviamente no lo pueden cobrar tan caro y a lo mejor no van a tener el volumen de clientes que hubieran tenido en un día normal sin pandemia. But it's a trade-off they're willing to take porque si no, no venden. Si siguieran con la lógica normal de su producto, a lo mejor no venden. And there's restaurants that, are, that have literally decided to close en esta época y no vender nada. Y hay otros que en cambio, they take the trade-off and they decide to produce differently. But the idea of the trade-off is basically that firms can produce in different ways, using different levels of inputs to reach a specific level of output. Eh, so, this example que les voy a poner aquí expresa un poco esta idea de cómo que acabo de, de, de comentar, the different trade-offs in the way that you produce the same thing. So, suppose that you have a bunch of workers in un país donde es mucho más manual la producción de las camisetas. And it looks more or less like this. You have this red piece of cotton, or the cloth, de la que sea, no sé si sea algodón, seguro, o de la tela que sea. And the point is that workers que tienen que producir en esa fábrica, no sé, mil camisetas al día, 
y tienes X amount of workers, para producir mil camionetas tienen que cortar bastante rápido y como que luego coser y whatever. Entonces, con cada tela, para hacerlo lo más rápido posible sin que se corten la mano o sin que, I don't know, they do stupid stuff, they have to cut this way, con esta separación entre camisetas para que, pues, funcionen lo más rápido posible. But in another place, in the same brand, ¿no? O sea, misma Nike, en otro país que tiene otra fábrica distinta with more equipment, they could be producing this way. Porque resulta que ahí no tienen tantos workers, sino tienen más bien ya máquinas que están estandarizados los procesos. So machines can work faster y, y pueden estar más juntitas porque como que son así como si fuera un sello, ¿no? Pensémoslo así. So they can use the same amount of cloth and produce in a more efficient way. But this is a trade-off. Porque no es lo mismo el costo de un empleado que te va a cortar, o los empleados necesarios para cortar las, la, la tela de esta forma, to the machines that you need, even with less workers, para producir de esta forma. Entonces, those combinations are all of these trade-offs. Es, ah, aquí produzco cuatro camisetas, but the cost of having all of these machines es tanto. Y tengo menos workers. Y en cambio, en este otro país, eh, un poco más primitivo, pues solo puedo producir tres camisetas, pero a lo mejor la producción es muy barata porque los trabajadores pues, son muy baratos. So those are the type of trade-offs I'm talking about. There are different ways of producing. Basically, a given target of output, o sea, tres camisetas, cuatro camisetas, piensen que son mil camisetas al día en cada fábrica. But the way you can produce uh, each one is different. And those are the type of substitution of inputs that you need to do in order to maximize your production. Que eso es lo que quiere la empresa. ¿Cómo maximizo mis ganancias en mi proceso productivo? Sujeto a mis costos. Ese es el problema de los productores. The production problem or the firm's problem is how do I maximize profits with respect to or, or subject to the different costs that I find in my, in my production process. And I have to determine What are the combinations of inputs that I want to use? Que van obviamente cambiar los costos. Cada input has their own particular cost. Such that I have the, the greatest amount of profit. Algo la mayor ganancia posible. And, uh, and I keep my investors happy y todo mundo happy. Este, eh, aunque a lo mejor me cueste más. Pero si hago más dinero no importa. Y otras empresas pues, pueden verlo de una manera diferente. And this is basically the production process eh, general. Questions hasta este momento with this first idea of production process.